everyone. Thank you very much for being here. So, as he said, I'm going to talk about how Python can help m monitor governments, and I will bring some Brazil examples. So, I'm Patricia, as he said. This is uh, our huge team in data office in Rio de Janeiro City Hall. And Judith couldn't be here today, but she's remote, so she's seeing us now. And now, start the presentation, Government Transparency in Brazil. So, uh, I think most of the countries uh, has this problem on how can we access the information, our, our information that we have right to, to, to have this data. And as you can see here, Brazil had created a law that name is um, Information Access Law. We call it LIE. It, it was created in 2022. And after the creation of this law, we saw like um, many of this, many of times the when you request information, it was being denied. So th this is that big peak there. But after a while, we went in a plateau. So we were like having 8.3, per 8.1% 8, 8 of denied information. But after when the ex for uh, when the former government Bolsonaro entered on the presidency, we saw that the denial of this information was increasing. So not only the denied information, but the incomplete responses too. But what can we do with that? So how can we, how can you, how can this can get better? And it, is this getting better since he's a former president? Ah, sorry for that. Um, we have a big, big problem in COVID because they, he was uh, denying that the COVID was very, bro ah, he's very bad thing. Um, and the press was giving a lot of, a lot of, a lot of, um, ah, a lot of time to COVID. And he was very, very mad about that. And he said that, the reports on the main journal was over. And it was not that he tried to stop the communication from COVID information. So what we have before was a big dashboard with accumulated data, regional distribution, case fatality rate, and a button to download data. So we have access for all the time series information. And after he said that, the ah, the health uh, agency in Brazil stopped giving information to press to everyone, and they just gave to us the data from the last 24 hours and accumulated. So the press get together and, and they start to talk to hospitals and talk to many places, and they created a group to share this information to the population. So we have to they have to create a, a group apart from the government to have the information in real time. But the problem continues. So even <laughs> without Bolsonaro, we still have some difficulties to access this information. And I think we will have this problem like for many, many years from now. So what can we do as a population or what can um, governments can do or what can private groups can do to be against this lack of uh, data transparency. So here we'll talk about the Rio de Janeiro's real town hall, what we are doing to open our data, and what some NGOs are doing, and what some private, private groups are doing too. It's just to inspire you to in enter a group or try something different. So the government itself. Um, here's just a, a little, almost, Almost a little joke. Uh, data, we, the Rio de Janeiro Town Hall had built the first data lake in the world. We say that it's the first data lake because we have like ChatGPT <laughs> saying that. It's in Portuguese, but I can assure you that he's saying that. Um, but in this data lake, you can say, ah, Patricia, um, New York gives information to the population too, but this data lake is a little different because if you do some, if you try to communicate to the town hall, like, ah, 
uh, there is a, uh, a hole in my street. In one hour or two, you can access the data lake and see, uh, see your problem there and see when they are going to solve your problem. So it's like, it's a real-time data lake. We can't put all the information we know because we have data privacy, but the information that doesn't have any problem, we are putting in this data lake so anyone in the world can access it for free. And it's good because we, we had a lot of um, researchers and journalists reaching us to get this information, and now they can have this, the access of this data by themselves. But I don't know if everyone knows what is a data lake and why this is this difference from data, our data lake and like New York data information. It's because their data is not a data lake, it's more like a database. The, one of the main difference is that on a data lake, you can put, um, you can store any, any kind of format. So you can store a JSON, you can store an image, a video, a HDF5, that it's a scientific format. Um, and your data don't need to be treated and don't need to be organized. And this is the main difference between data lake and database. And how we are doing this and where we are using Python on this, on this project. So we have some data sources, some databases, like we have um, health database, we have education database, or in, any other agency inside the, 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 the municipal government. And, and their databases are apart from each other. And with the data lake, we can put all this information together and try to connect um, citizens information. So we can connect to these databases, connect to FTP information, connect to API information. So like on API, we get some meteorological information to try to predict, to, to try to create an outcasting um, model. And all these connections we do with Python. So this extraction from the data sources and the treatment of this data are doing with Python. The persistence of this information on Data Lake is also doing, we use Python to do this. And all of our codes are open on the internet. So not only the data is open, but the code. So we have an open GitHub, everyone can access there, can copy the, the, the code and do whatever it wants. So after we get this information, we save it on our raw level. Um, sometimes this raw level is treated, sometimes it's not treated. And then we get this information put in our production level. And then after the production level, we uh, put some of this information on Data Hill. Data Hill is our official data lake that is open to everyone. Well, and while we do this, we also use Python. Python and Prefect to, to who knows the, this pipeline orchestration. This is an example of like a pipeline. So at the first type, we get data interval the, 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 of the data we want to extract. After that, we download this information, we save it like in local machine, and then we upload it to the data lake. This is like just functions, <laughs> the code is bigger than this, but this is the pipeline we wrote on Prefect. So after uh, treating this information and saving on the data lake, we can connect to many places like dashboards, analysis, applications, and chatbots. I will show, I will try to pass it fast on an example of each one of these. So in dashboards, we have this nice string lit <laughs> dashboard. Um, we have to create it because Brazil, it's, um, it's a country that loves party, and we have a big party that the, the name of it is Carnival. Probably you already, already heard about it. Um, and this Carnival has a lot of parades, so you have inside parties, you have outside parties on the street, and sometimes these parades goes <laughs> along the city. And we, the town hall was having a, little, a, a big trouble trying to see if it was going to be so, two or more parades that was going to happen at the same time at the same space, or if it was going to have a parade like with another event like a, a, soccer, a soccer game or a congress or a show or, or like if it was near a hospital or something like that. And we built this dashboard so they could see if it was going to happen, if two events was going to happen at the same time and space using Python. We did this analysis using Python. 
and um, yeah, and I will show you the video about that, the little video. It's not a big dashboard, but it helped them a lot. It's like some cities has the big difficulties that we can we can resolve easily. Okay, it, it, I think it's not going to work, but no problem. It was just a dashboard showing. And I can't get off this. Oh, let me check here. Okay. So this is one of one examples um, about the what we had well, what we have done with Python inside there. The video now. The other example is we do a lot of analysis, and these analyses are open to the population, so the dashboards. Um, this one uh, we brought here, here to you because we have a very famous song uh, that Tonjo being writing it about um, the rain in March. So the music says that the rain stops in March and it has a lot of rain in March. And we built this, this analysis to show that the, the main part of the rain occurs like in February and mo sometimes, some years, it doesn't end on March. So it was just to make a joke with the music. Yeah, Tom Jobim was wrong, but I, I, I don't want to say that to him. Um, and as you can see, this is a dashboard about rain again. Rain is very important to us because um, Rio de Janeiro has um, a mountain re relief. So it starts raining from nothing. You are there, it's sun, and then from nothing, it starts raining a lot. So rain is a very big problem there. And we build this dashboard um, that shows the light green is where it's not, not raining. So this is the map of Rio de Janeiro, of course. <laughs> the green is where it's not raining, the light green. The green is raining a little, yellow, it's raining a lot. And the orange one is raining too, too much. And we have a same dashboard to, to show the population where, where, where are the places that are flooded now. So this is very important there too because it rains a lot and the water can go <laughs> anywhere. So it's very, very important. Ah, and we, we are using Python um, in this, pre, uh, this raining problem. We, are, we have, some, we have a, two projects, um, one with, uh, ah, with two universities in Brazil, one of them is with Google and to try to create an outcasting model to predict when these rain, rains are going to happen. And of course, we have a chatbot um, where the population can talk to the town hall and say, hey, the, this bus has a problem, this bus station has a problem. And if you put the information there, you can see on the data lake where it's going or if they started seeing a problem, when they are going to solve it. So now I will show you an example of an NGO and how he's helping us to open, to to have data transparency. The name of this project is Darling Diary, that is Querido Diário in Portuguese. And it has this name because uh, in Brazil we have, um, every city has to publish their public acts in something that is named um, official diary. So this is why this name. But every, we, every city publish their diary in a different way, so it makes us crazy. It's hard to get this information together. And we have this NGO that is, had created 2,040 robots to get this information daily, on a daily basis, but we still have, you, you can see, we have, they have created robots for half of the cities, um, so we still need people to help us in building that. And you can, you can, search the information in their, in their platform, in their site, so it's a very, very nice project. We have uh, the newspapers that are the private sector trying to open data. This is the Instituto Asmina. Asmina in Portuguese is a, sl a slug to grow. Um, that, that, that this map shows each point is um, it's a person in the Congress, and if this person is up, 
it, sh it's in, it shows that this person has created many laws that, it's, um, that is good for women, women rights. And if this person is upside, it means that it, it, this person is creating laws that is against the women rights. So they are monitoring um, this information with Python and treating this information with Python too and publishing this in the site. I will not try to run this, but I was, was, going, just one, was going to show you how the site works. And the last one, this is Info Amazonia. Um, this is a journal ha that do this. Um, as you know, Amazon is very important for the globe for the world, um, and they collect the data from the satellites and, and show us where, is, where, where we have fire now. Beside this, on the purple area, I don't know if you can see this, they show where are the indigenous areas that, that has um, some fires going on. Uh, and this, you can follow Bot do Amazonia Sufocada <laughs> if you want to see this map, like, every week. So, thank you very much. Um, you can see the many stuff that we, we already had, like the visualizations and the dashboards in our site, dads.hill. You can follow us on YouTube and Twitter. We always put inf new information there. In YouTube, we have a thread teaching how can you, how our pipelines, how can we, how can we build our pipeline so we show all the progress, the prefect, the flows, um, and our, our infrastructure. Our GitHub, as I said, it's open to everyone. And if you want to contact Judith Cipreste or me, you can have your LinkedIn there. Thank you very much. Great talk. Um, we have uh, a bit of time for questions, so please reach out to the main microphones. Hi there. Um, the visualizations look really nice. Um, it's a shame you couldn't show them working. But I'm wondering what uh, libraries you use to create the user interfaces. You, you mean the visualization with the map, like the rain map? Yeah, the rain map at the bottom of the plot points. You know. Yeah, we use Webflow to create that, but all the information comes with the, after the Py, Py, Python analyzed the, the data. So we get this information, we treat this information with Python, put it on a, reg, a Regis, um, database and then access with, create an API for it and then use the web flow to access this information and create the map. So the map is not Python. Yeah, the map isn't Python. <laughs> I was just curious to hear what, what was generating the yeah. user interfaces. Yeah, and okay. the other graphs, we usually use data wrapper, if I'm not wrong, because data wrapper makes the graphics, the graphs very beautiful. And are they interactive? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Not here, but on the site, yeah. Yeah, of course. <laughs> okay, thanks. Thank you for your talk and Thank your work. You. Um, could you tell us a little bit about you? Are you, you work for the city hall, you're from NGO, How, where does uh, the money come from? Yeah, I'm, I work for the city hall, um, like two years for now, and that's it. <laughs> so, so this is sponsored by the city itself? Um, not this time. <laughs> I work there and I think the work the work we do there is very nice, and then I wanted to come here and present what we are doing there in Brazil. Hi, thank you for your talk. Uh, is the government trying to stop you or stop this project <laughs> some way? <laughs> no, they never. The, the mayor. They, he loves what we, we do. He always gets our visualizations and put in his Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> he loves what we do. Um, and as we don't like, we don't propagate the uh, data, um, in, <sighs> private information, it, for him, it's, it's very good. Uh, so you aren't sharing any information that the government doesn't want to be shared, basically, or are you? Uh, sometimes we share something, <laughs> but um, we try. We try to think. It, we are not trying to, like to say 
bad things about the mayor, but we want to bring stuff that are good for the, the citizen, the civilians. So we think when we are going to think about some new visualization or a new project, we try to prioritize things that is going to be good for them, like the chatbot, a way to, to them to talk faster with us, or like flood, it's very, very, um, it's a, prob a big problem there, or it's, um, Ah, yeah, flood, okay. Uh, and so we try to bring these problems inside and try to figure out how to solve them and how to show them to people to s and in a format that they can understand. So what you basically do is very important journalism. Uh, yeah. Is there, like, sometimes do you think of, hey, we shouldn't share this because we will have issues or something like that? Um... I'm more on the analysis part if Judith was here because Judith is the data journalist in the group. So she, she, she can have this kind of problem. Um, but like we, some, we have some analysis showing how, um, how the, the bus are doing on the, on the city, what, what are the main problems there. So we, we try to do some kind of this kind of stuff. Yeah, thanks for the great talk. A little bit uh, more on that. Um, the, um, your whole initiative, does it, uh, th has it also changed the way that the government is looking at sharing data or uh, improving their own infrastructure? Yeah. Does it, have, does it uh, set, yeah, set some, some, some of these initiatives from the government in motion? Um, like, we have other cities always connecting to, trying to connect to us. So we can show them how we are doing this and how we are, because we have like um, a formation, we, we, we train people inside the town hall to know how to do Python, how to code, how to do visualization. And sometimes we have to, we go to the other cities to show them what we are doing and they are very interested in open their data too. It's not all cities, of course. <laughs> okay, thanks. Uh, so, if the government changes its mind and decides to actively mm, block you, we have we had some years ago in Spain problems with that, with the government taking down projects on GitHub and all the things. Do you have any plan if something like that could happen? I did understand the beginning of the question. If if the government changes its mind and tries to actively mm, block your project or take down it, everything, do you have any plan to avoid that? Um, I, I don't think we have any. Pl Our plan is like to sh is like do a lot of stuff, the most stuff that we can do to show our, our value to the to the to the people. And but I, I don't think that this major major is going to put us down. Okay, thank you. Because he, he this the idea to create this group was was from him. So he go went to the my chief my my chief and talked to him and said, hey, I want to create this. It's data office, and for him, it's very important too. And if the measure changes? Yeah. <laughs> Maybe we'll be without work. <laughs> Thanks, that was really inspiring. Mm -hmm. um, I worked on a couple of projects in San Francisco where the idea of a data lake would have been really useful. Where did that come from? I've never heard of it before. Um, I don't know, maybe it's my boss. It, because, like, my boss, he's the creator is of... It, is it a um, concept? Yes. Oh. It's a concept in data science. Yeah. Oh, ah, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. Data oh, leaks, like... Idea. Oh, is it? Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Oh, so that's me being a newbie. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> ah, no, I understand you. your question. Yeah, data leaks... <laughs> no, yeah, it already answer. exists. The word already exists. Um, but the idea is like the, my chief and other guys, they created um, a Python library where people can put, uh, because of this lie, this law, information access, people go to the government and say, hey, I want this. So these people didn't, um, didn't have anywhere to put this information, so my boss created a place where they, everyone could put their data yeah. and then to restore this information. And then he was invited to be the big boss of this project. Okay, thank you. More questions? Or you can reach me out after. Yeah, thank you. If there are no more questions, um, 
coffee break. <laughs> Thank you very much.